Well, let's have a quick look at postulate 18 here. We're going to start with this blue line, and I can see the slope up 4 over 2. We know how to do this. This is a slope of 2, so I'm just going to write it down like that. m is equal to 2. Now I'm going to draw a line perpendicular. And this theorem tells us that, well, I can see intuitively, instead of going up 2 over 1, down 1 over 2. And then I can see a slope of negative 1 half. So that fits with our, with our uh, postulate here, where we're told that the slopes are opposite reciprocals. And I could look at that another way. I've got all these numbers. Remember, one slope's positive, the other's negative. 2 over 1, well, that's going to become 1 over 2. Makes sense to me. Um, the classic definition right here, which is in your, in your postulate, the product of the slopes is negative 1. Now, another way that I'll sometimes visualize it, imagine these little triangles. Look at this. You've got a triangle right there. Ah, just rotations like that. Okay, let's do some problems. Well, here in exercise 30, we're going to find the equation of a line which passes through the point 0, 0, the origin, and is perpendicular to this line, which I've got in blue. Um, well, we'll graph it too, just for fun. This is an easy one, but um, let's get started with it. Perpendicular lines, we have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So, I know that if this slope is negative, the blue slope, then the red slope, the perpendicular line, is positive. 9 is 9 over 1, so the reciprocal is going to be 1 over 9. Pretty simple, huh? Now, we can also express that this way that the two slopes, the product of those two slopes, is negative 1. That's actually the definition given in our, in our textbook. So now, let's get to it. Let's go with the slope-intercept form of the line. Since we know that, well, we, we already know the intercept because it goes through 0, 0. So that's a piece of cake. And we know that the red slope, the slope of the perpendicular line, is 1 ninth. So I guess it's going to look like that by substitution. And, of course, you can drop that zero, and you're done. Now, for those of you that wanted to see it graphically, uh, put some points here. The blue line has got an intercept of negative 1, and down 9 over 1, or up 9 back 1. Draw on that blue line. And I know that my red points, I'm going to go through the origin here, and I'm going to go up 1 over 9, down 1 back 9, and if I graphed it, Sure looks perpendicular to me. Let's do a slightly more interesting exercise. I've got my equation here in blue. That's the line in slope-intercept form. I want a line perpendicular to it, passing through this red point. So let's just get right to it. Like we said in the last problem, uh, perpendicular lines, that means we have slopes that are the opposite reciprocals. So I know that positive the opposite is negative. Remember, two steps, opposite and reciprocals. You're going to reverse the seven, or say swap the sevens and the threes. So um, if I looked at it this way, as a product of the slopes, the product of the two slopes is negative one. Those are opposite reciprocals. So let's um, go to this form of the line. This is the point slope form of the line, and really, we're just about done. All we have to do is substitute. I now know in red what I have for my uh, slope of my red line. And um, P, my coordinates for P, that is my x1, y1. So my solution, I can write it down right there. Remember, x1 is negative 1, y1 is positive 1. So when I follow the form of the line, I substitute y minus 1 equals negative 3 sevenths times the quantity x minus a negative 1, or x plus 1. If you want to see the graphs, right there in blue, I started here with a y-intercept of 10, up 7 over 3, off the graph. So I go down 7, back 3, down 7, back 3, etc. There's my blue line. Then I'm going to put in my point here. That's point that passes through. And down 3 over 7, or in the reverse direction, up 3, back 7, oh, right there, and draw that red line. Looks perpendicular to me. 
And as you'd expect, this, this is a non-integral value for the y-intercept. So you could convert this into slope-intercept, but why bother? You're good enough right here. Well, there's no opposite reciprocals in this exercise. I've got a line that looks like this. And you're thinking, hmm, is that vertical or horizontal? Well, sometimes I think of this, and it's got a slope of zero, and zero sounds like a horizontal line. So I'll draw my blue line down there. Now again, we didn't have to draw it, but this may help you visualize. In our postulate 18, we practiced a lot with those opposite reciprocal slopes, but here you go. Uh, horizontal and perpendicular lines, or and vertical lines are perpendicular. So, um, of course, horizontal has a zero slope. Vertical is undefined. And if this line, the blue line, represents all values where y is negative 3, the vertical line must be all values where x is equal to positive 4. So, I draw it right in there, and that's my equation. It's that easy. Well, here we go with a given line in point-slope form, and we're going to find a line perpendicular to it passing through this red point. So, um, we'll rely on the traditional part of the definition, perpendicular lines having slopes that are opposite reciprocals. I'm just going to get right to it and take that negative 2. Negative becomes positive. That's the opposite part. 2 over 1 becomes 1 over 2. That's the reciprocal part. I can verify the product of those two slopes, the red and the blue, is negative 1. That's the definition of opposite reciprocal. So now, well, now let's, I guess let's just get to the point-slope form. We'll put it right back into point-slope. And so let's see, there's my solution. That easy. x1 is 2, y1 is 3. Plain substitution, and I'll put in one half for the slope. Now I know a lot of you like to change them into y-intercept. You love that form. This one would actually work with integral values. As you can see, if I distribute the one half times the x and the negative two, and then add the three to both sides, I'll come up with the slope-intercept form of the same line. Hey, let's graph. And we're going to graph this one. Now, without converting it. So let's just start right here. I'm going to put those um, I'm going to put those blue dots in because I can read right from the equation. Uh, I can see negative 3, 4. I'm starting at negative 3, 4 and I got a slope of oops, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1 or down 1, yeah, down 2 over 1. Set it right the first time. There's my blue line and I've got my point here and the opposite reciprocal, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. I've got that, or down 1 back 2. And we can see, there we go. To verify, look at my equation, and what do you know? My y-intercept is positive 2. Notice that the uh, point of intersection is a non-integral value, but we weren't really interested in that. This is uh, really, uh, this is as far as you needed to take the problem, and this is just a wee bit more. And let's finish with exercise number 34 in standard form. So I've got a standard form in blue here, and I want to find a line perpendicular to it passing through this given point, P. Well, you know, probably the easiest thing to do is convert it. So we'll do this. We'll subtract the 3x from both sides. Then we can divide everything by negative 5, and we have the y-intercept form that we all know and love. We'll jump right into it. We'll take the opposite reciprocals, and we know the opposite reciprocal by now of 3 over 5 is negative 5 over 3. So now let's just go right into our point-slope form, and I know where my x1, y1 are. x1 is 8, so x minus negative 8 is x plus 8, y minus 0 is simply y. So, there you go. Um, we're done there, but let's do a little graphing, because I know you like that part. Now, when we graph this, uh, I suppose we, in the standard form, we did know that it had an x-intercept of 2. And we know the slope here is, um, the slope here, of course, is 3 fifths, up 3 over 5, down 3, back 5, down 3, back 5. 
There's my line. My um, red points were over here. I was going through this. <clears throat> That's my given point, negative 8, 0. And my slope there, negative or down 5 over 3. My red line, it sure looks perpendicular.